mentioned that silver could be the, the new oil. Uh, can you take us a little bit deeper into your thought on that? Yeah, so I, I think silver can be the new oil for photovoltaics. Um, the price of photovoltaic panel production has been falling to incredible lows. Uh, we're now talking about 12 cents per watt produced. And that makes solar power the cheapest way of producing electricity. Uh, geopolitically, it also means that you're not reliant on Saudi oil or Qatari gas, and uh, you don't create CO2 emissions. So really, it's a win-win-win-win. Uh, the main downside of solar is that the sun only shines half the time. Um, you're not going to get much production at night, so you you have to find a way to use batteries, um, which don't have to be chemical batteries, you can have gravity batteries or other ways uh, of making this work. But having said that, um, electricity is the ultimate commodity. If you can produce electricity at a lower price on somebody else, you make free money. So solar power is no longer about being politically correct or having a subsidy. It's simply a numbers game. If I can put in more solar panels, produce electricity cheaper, uh, it's a win-win for everybody. And because of that, the production, the investments that have gone into these factories which make solar panels and in polysilicon especially, which is the main ingredient, uh, the main cost of solar panels, um, it, it, it's been astonishing, uh, especially in China. I mean, they have overinvested in it to a tune of about 45% overproduction at the end of 2023 and you will think that they will stop and take a rest but instead they're doubling up and they're looking at doubling the over capacity amount of 2023 um, so why is that happening a because it seems like the demand is going to be nearly infinite as long as these panels keep on lowering price uh, the demand for them will go higher and higher because you can make electricity cheaper. It's very price sensitive. Um, and uh, I think the other reason is also geopolitical. If China is going to produce so many solar panels and sort of uh, creating such a big advantage in low cost production of these, um, that's giving you power advantage. So, uh, if you put these things together, you can just be assured that uh, the growth of photovoltaics will continue. Um, because demand is assured, production is increasing at an incredible pace. Uh, it actually makes sense, and it's subsidized in the forms of very low interest uh, uh, loans to these manufacturers of polysilicon. And now, if you look at what you need to make a solar panel. Well, the primary cost is polysilicon. Mm -hmm. And the sets essentially made out of silicon, which is sort of sand. So it's uh, energy expensive and you need a, a, a relatively expensive process. But the Chinese are investing so much into it that we went from a shortage, which we had in 2022, to 45% overcapacity to a doubling of that again. Right. So polysilicon now is no longer shortage. It's something you have in abundance. And you can always build more factories to produce this stuff. What else do you need to put in a solar panel? Well, you need silver. That's the second most expensive portion of these panels. And silver, you cannot produce in a factory. You have to mine it. And as we all know, there's a finite amount of it. And you cannot easily substitute it, despite what you might hear out there, because it usually causes the um, life of the panel to degrade very quickly. And if you are a um, manufacturer of these panels, you usually have to give a 25-year warranty on the panels. If you find out that because you use copper and copper oxidized and your panels start losing a lot of capacity a decade into its life, and you've got one decade worth of faulty panels that you produced, and you've got these people's warranty claims coming in. Well, you can go bankrupt. 
And in uh, so early 2010s, we had some solar companies which experimented with some of these things, uh, and some of them did go bankrupt. So it was a very clear message that y you you can thrift silver, you can try and put less and less and less in, in order to reduce the cost, mm -hmm. because this is the second most expensive part of these things. Uh, but Taking it out completely, that might ruin you. You know, so even if you have a technical way where people say, "Oh, we can do all cover copper system around," trust us. Uh, if you're CEO of a silver company, I mean a solar power company, you probably want to wait a decade or two and make sure that the guys who are trying are not going to go bankrupt along the way. So we can be assured that you know, with this growth, silver is going to maintain its position. And as a side note, even so, there's less and less silver being used per panel. The new technologies like top ponds, they need about 20% more silver. And there's another technology which needs almost twice as much. So just the rate of decline per panel of silver use is a lot slower or might even be going up. Um, so what else do you need to make these panels? Well. You need aluminium, which you've got plenty. You need some copper, which you've got plenty. You need plastics. You need glass. All of these things are abundant. What's going to slow down this crazy production surge of photovoltaics? It's going to be so. So once people put these things together, and more importantly, once... That we're going to see stories in the mainstream media reporting on this because they feel confident enough that they have data from institutions like the Silver Institute or others to collaborate these sort of things. Uh, then you are going to see a big increase in demand of silver. And I think, you know, saying that silver is the new oil for photovoltaics and photovoltaics becoming, you know, the biggest growth energy source now. Uh, I don't think that's an understatement. I think that's a reality. And I think going from silver being the forgotten metal towards silver being the oil of photovoltaics, you know, that's just a different way of thinking about it. And that's why I was calling 2023 a watershed year. Not because the price went up, but because the reality of the photovoltaic market became clear. These investments into polysilicon, they said, so pass forward. And that pass is not going to change. And to me, it's just a matter of one plus one equals three now, um, uh, when we are in the silver space. And it's just sort of for a matter of these points being put together. Um, and it's not that they're not being put together because people aren't smart enough. It's just because they're not aware of it. Uh, and because if these stories are going to be run, whoever runs the stories and putting these thoughts together, they want somebody else to refer to. Um, and again, I think uh, April, May will be set, set time uh, when we will start hearing these stories. Okay, so when we turn back the pages of history, we're, we probably are going to find that 2023 was at that point in history where things started to change for, for silver because of the photovoltaic demand. Uh, silver Institute coming out in April, better than 50%. It's going to look like uh, a deficit once again with silver. And I guess you can fast forward a bit to 2024 U.S. elections where I think it, it doesn't matter who who's elected. I think the point being the, the Federal Reserve is just not going to be able to uh, to get out of the hole that that was dug and and that could be something good for silver as well. Yeah, I mean all the points for silver and and why we built the reserve and went to this business in the first place, which was say 2008 financial crisis crash, right? And the amount of debts that's being built up, all of these things still hold true. Uh, right. The photovoltaic demand is just sort of a big accelerator, uh, which I think is going to really put the world's attention on silver. Um, I've been calling silver the forgotten metal because it's been receiving so little attention. It's in the United States more, but you know, in Europe and most parts of the rest of the world, uh, silver is not really being talked about much. Mm. So, uh, as you mentioned, the election in 2024 uh, is going to create uh, uncertainty. 
and that's going to drive gold and silver. Um, it, the amount of deficits that we keep on having, uh, the amount of divisions that are being created throughout the world uh, is going to drive the demand of safe haven demand of gold and silver. The geopolitical tensions are going to drive the demand of silver. And of course, the, the uh, increasing debt to such unsustainable, yeah. unsustainable levels are going to drive the demand for silver. So uh, the stars all seem to be aligned for silver to have a very, very positive 2024 in terms of physical demand, which is basically assured, and most likely in prices, you know, going much higher. And keep in mind, once these reserves, uh, easy to reach reserves at the LBMA warehouses, at COMEX, at the Shanghai Gold Exchange, um, some of these silver ETFs, you know, are, are used up. Uh, the photovoltaic industry might just start getting silver wherever they want. And, the, you know, the price of silver has to go up for grandma to take her silverware and send it in for melting to make photovoltaics. That price has to be a lot higher. Uh, if we ever get to that point, you know, you will see uh, silver prices to be many times higher than what it is now. Okay. Uh, Gregor, Gregerson, we thank you again for your time. Um, just want to be sure that you folks know that on our YouTube playlist, we, we do have a section for Gregor's insights. So if you want to follow more of what he's saying, please do follow that, that playlist. So again, Gregor, thank you for your time and look forward to our next insights interview. Sounds good. Thank you, Patrick.